And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, episode 47. I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Joining me as always, my co-host, Junior Ruiz. That's right. It's funny because I used to introduce myself as Junior Ruiz, co-host of Breaking the Fourth Wall. Right. Remember that? Yeah. But now since the shows have been integrated, it just feels weird not having to have like the title part with the name. Maybe I can come up with something else. Comics Remix CEO, I don't know. Mad CEO, Sam- yeah, what are you, Triple H? Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Dude, you see the Triple H and Stephanie McMahon Snapple commercial? I have not, I heard about it though. Okay. I heard about it. That's so, busting right into breaking the fourth wall this week. <sighs> Preacher brought this up last week that uh, Dominic Cooper was going to be cast or mm-hmm. was rumored yeah. to be cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's official now. Excellent. He is our Jesse Custer. All right. Uh, most of their casting is done. They've got Tulip cast. They've got Cassidy cast. Our space is cast. Here's my question. Do you? Because it's going to air on AMC, correct? Mm-hmm. Do you think that what the Preacher show, or do you think the Preacher show is going to do for the Preacher comic what, and, and the, the brand, what the Walking Dead TV show has done for the comic and the brand? I don't know if... Like, because zombies are so just popular, period, Yeah. in pop culture today. I think that it was easy for the crossover to happen. Um, I'm sure it'll pick up some sales. Yeah. I mean, they'll probably end up putting out new editions of Preacher. Well, like, I, mean, I, mean, I know like, they already have, but they'll put them out again. You can't, like, throw a fucking rock without hitting, like, you go to Walmart and you get Walking Dead action figures, T-shirts... You know, pop, I pop mean, figures, everything. yeah, calendars. Yeah, everything. So that's what I'm saying. Like, do you think... No. You don't think it'll be to that No, like, like I said, it's because zombies are such a big part of pop culture, regardless of Walking Dead, mm-hmm. that, like, there's nothing really, you know... I mean, it could be. I mean, you saw Breaking... Like, I mean, every show, like... I think it's also the marketing. That, that uh, yeah. What, was, what's, uh, what channel was uh, Breaking Bad on? AMC. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, look at that. AMC's Action got figures. figures. Yeah, but you d- you don't see that stuff like you see Walking Dead stuff. True, but you do see it. I mean, it's out there. Yeah. But it's not as prevalent as Walking Dead. Imagine a uh, arse-faced bobblehead. Yeah, right? <laughs> Which I can't believe they even cast that kid. I wonder what he'll look like on the show. Yeah, right. Uh, so far, no one of note, really, on the show outside of Dominic Cooper. Okay. Um, they did cast Elizabeth Perkins. All those were Perkins for a bunch of stuff. She was in Big with Tom Hanks back in the 80s. Uh, more recently, she was on Weeds. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you watched. I know it is. Okay. Well, I believe that she is playing uh, Jesse Custard's mother, but I could be wrong. I, th- I read that somewhere, and now I can't find where I read it. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see how the show's going to do, considering that Seth Rogen's executive producing it. Uh, Knowing that Seth Rogen's name's attached to it kind of, like, scares me a little bit. Yeah. I, guess he's I mean, right. at least he's not trying to be Jesse Custer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, right. But we'll see. I mean, you know, it's it's a uh, that's the equivalent of like finding out that Freddie Prince Jr. was writing for Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I I, I could I could you agree know. with that. Uh, that show really for me, it's going to be a wait and see. I mean, uh, Walking Dead has really pushed the envelope mm-hmm. with what they've done, and. Preacher, in my opinion, is just an envelope pushing series. Oh yeah, there's so much controversial stuff in there. Like one of the funniest lines to me is is the sheriff when they first find the church and it's destroyed. Mm-hmm. And I can't even really repeat the line here because it's just it's racist. And I know there's no way it'll make it into the show, but it's one of those lines that's always stuck with me. And I would be surprised if half of the material makes the transition over. Mm-hmm. Like especially a lot of the stuff that happens with Air Star. And, like, you know, I mean, I bet Penis Head doesn't make it. You know what I'm talking about, right? How he gets that cut on his, because he's a bald guy. If you've never read Preacher, he's bald. And he gets a cut on his head that makes it look like a, a dick. And, you know, and, I mean, doesn't he get his genitals shoot off by dogs? Yeah. He gets ass ripped by a big, crazy, like, ape-looking guy. It's a bunch of bad shit. Yeah. Jesus Christ's retarded descendant. You know, Definitely there's a wait and see. A, there's a lot of stuff in there. It's like, uh, it's the same thing with like Walking Dead. Now that we well, know here, here, Negan's coming, well, that, is uh, Negan, what's Negan going to be like? 
because Negan was so polarizing in the comics with the swearing in particular. Yeah. How is that going to transition to TV? Will they swear on there? No. Walking Dead? Yeah. Uh, you'll probably they, get like, drop a, like a F-bombs? damn and a bitch. They don't drop F-bombs. Right? No. Not at all. What about in Breaking Bad? They ever drop F-bombs? <clears throat> um, I don't think so. No. And I mean, well, here's that's, my thing with that's the something they could just beep out too. True. But will they? Here, here's my thing with Preacher though. Knowing, obviously, what it is in terms of comic. Somebody read that and was like, we need to turn this into a TV show. So there's something there where they're like, okay, we we can or we can't do this because if they neuter it too much, what's the point? Oh, totally. You know? Well, it's, it's kind of like, it becomes like an, an iZombie thing, for lack of a better comparison. iZombie, from the comics of the TV show, has been so completely neutered mm-hmm. that I wonder if there's fans of the comic that are just turned off by the show because it's so drastically different from what I mean, it's not drastically. It but is, but you it's can really not. Tell. Like the basic concept is the same. She eats brains. She, I mean, in the comic book, she was eating people's brains from the graveyard. <clears throat> and then, if they had some unfinished business in their life, their ghosts would visit her, and she'd help them sort it out. Right. Whereas now, she's eating these people's brains from the morgue where she works, and they've died somehow. And usually, it involves a crime. And then she helps this cop solve the crimes. So it's, you know, but the, it's, the show's actually improved a little bit. I know last, a couple weeks ago, I don't know if the last week or the, our first week back, I said I was kind of concerned about that show. Yeah. And if it followed the same pattern, it's kind of starting to break, but it's still kind of the same formula. You know what show so, I finally uh, sat down and watched, started watching? What's that? Fucking Daredevil. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. Like four or five episodes. Hey, see, in. I'm only three, so I'm still only three episodes in. I'm taking my time on it. A lot of people sat and they binge watched it and they're saying it's great. And some people say they binge watched it more than once. Mm-hmm. First of all, I don't have the luxury of binge watching anything anymore. Right. But at the same time, if it's only 13 episodes and Lord knows if we're going to get a season two, but it's looking like we are. Oh, I, um, it's, it's going to get a season two for sure. Why rush through it? It's not going anywhere. It's a Netflix original. Yeah, it's it's going to be there. I think a lot of people are rushing through it because of the internet. Yeah. Like people are so like, oh... Like, I hadn't even, I had just watched the first episode, and then I was like, okay, I have to wait for Melissa, because she wants to see it. She'll be pissed off if I watch it without her. What about any tie-ins, to, any possible tie-ins to Avengers? Do you think maybe um, that's why people are uh, flipping through it, flying through it? You know, I don't think so, because to me, it's not a show that, if it ever ties into the Marvel Cinema, I mean... It does. Obviously, they've it, mentioned. it exists. There's in, episodes yeah. where they've mentioned... Well, in the first episode, they mentioned the incident. Yeah. The thing in New York, but then they also one of the other later episodes. I think it was like the third or fourth one. He mentioned like, "Oh, we're not. We don't have magic hammers or suits of armor right. and all this other stuff." Well, I mean, it's but it will directly tie in like how Agents of Shield ties in. Not yet. Probably, maybe you know, it could, it might not. Who knows? I well, think... they say they're supposed to be an Avengers two. Oh, really? Yeah, not Avengers two. Excuse me. Um, of Infinity War Part two. Really? Yeah. They're saying that like mm-hmm. that that's probably where all these heroes are gonna finally come to have Together. a come, yeah have a in the words of Stone Cold a come to Jesus meeting. Nice. Speaking of come to Jesus and false gods, Batman vs Superman finally got that sneak peek of the trailer. You you know in this day and age, mm-hmm. I think it's ridiculously stupid how they release teasers to teaser trailers. Yeah, it is. Like, it is ridiculous. are we that as a, as a as a as a race? Not as a race, as a society. As a thank you, as a society, are we that like attention prone? Like we just we have to have you know we have to have a teaser to a teaser to the regular trailer. Like really? I think it's just like it laziness. It. Really, I think it's. I think with so much like I, I don't really. I just think it's stupid. Fuck it. I was gonna say something different. I was gonna try and explain it. I've now decided I'm not explaining it. It's just fucking stupid. Like, I hate watching shit. <clears throat> Today, we're going to reveal the teaser for the teaser okay, trailer. Okay, why, like, why? why does Avengers Age of Ultron have, like, 20 clips of the movie? Yes. Like, by the time the movie comes out, I'm going to have seen everything that was worth seeing. You watch your mouth. There's going to be, like, no <laughs> point to seeing the movie. Are we going? You going? I, I'm going to try. It, it depends. We'll okay. see. It's going to be that weekend. Yeah. So... Maybe 
No, I got to work. Maybe Saturday evening. But anyway, so yeah, people again polarized on the on the Batman versus Superman thing. The only <clears throat> cool thing, and actually, I brought this up with a com- in a conversation with my buddy the other day on the phone. When the hell did Warner Brothers or whoever put a Superman statue in downtown Chicago? And not, and Chicagoans missed this, unless it's like computer. That's generated. totally CGI. I'm okay. sure. Because I'm like, I would have remembered hearing about that. Yeah, that's totally CGI. But I do love that it's there and you see the skyline, the Chicago skyline in the background. So, I mean, that still kind of serves as continuity that Gotham is Chicago. Right, right. They did that in the Nolan movies. Mm-hmm. You know? So, I, I do like that aspect of it. And I think there was when they revealed the statue, it does say false god. Mm-hmm. I thought that was cool. That's it. And you know what? No, I take that back. I like the bat suit. Dude. That bat suit looks. That, that's probably the it's, best looking bat suit I've ever seen, dude. Hands not, down. Not the armored one. Yeah, no, like, no. When you have the voiceover and then they they zoom in and you see the suit just sitting in the in the case, I was like, that's badass. And you know what? From what I've seen, the very brief clips, Affleck doesn't look bad in the suit. No, it's it they looks, hide his booty chin. It looks very Frank Miller esque. Yes, it does. And finally, finally, we get a comic book style Batman. Mm-hmm. As far as Aesthetically, yeah, um, I'm excited, dude. I, I think it's gonna be good. I am kind of pissed off that of, and I have now boiled this down to its Marvel fanboys. Marvel fanboys seem to be a lot more vocal on the internet than DC guys because and they don't have anything to be vocal about. That's probably true, but at the same time, like, how the hell are you gonna bash this trailer and this movie for being dark and gritty? And then overly praised Daredevil for being dark and gritty. Very true. See, now when I started, I didn't say I was. I bashed Batman Superman. I'm not. I'm still not in a hurry to watch it because this teaser didn't tease me. Like after I watched it, I was like, not like, oh my god, I can't wait to see the full trailer. Oh yeah, no. You know that's that's what it is. The trailer is supposed to grab you and be like, have you like, I really want to watch this movie. Like for all intents and purposes, right? Avengers. I'm dying. Dude, these, they, it can't get here fast enough. You know, honestly, the more they reveal about Avengers, the less I want to see but it. But here's the thing. You have the option to not watch those clips. And oh, yeah. Still, you no, know I, mean? I hear that. And I know there's like four or five clips out there or whatever. Well, I, I haven't watched like them all. I watched nine. the Hulk versus the Hulkbuster one, and then I watched the one where uh, Tony was arguing with everybody about creating Ultron. That's all I've watched. I, have you seen the scene where they're like trying to, they're like, drinking oh. together and they're trying to pick up Thor's hammer. Oh, that was released a while, but that's actually like, funny as shit. So, th- what I'm saying is, if you got all this good stuff in the movie, why, like, give it yeah, up? Yeah, but so that's, like, what, three minutes worth of footage to a two and a half like, hour why film? would you put off the Hulkbuster thing when that, in my opinion, is, like, one of the coolest things that they've done so far cinematically? No, I will say the one thing I don't like about that clip is Tony staying... She's messing with you. It's the witch. She's messing with your mind. So that right then and there gave away a crucial plot point. Because you're wondering, why are they hunting the Hulk in the woods? Why is the Hulk fighting the Hulkbuster Iron Man? What's going on with Hulk? And then once Tony came out in this clip and said that, it's like, well, you just kind of ruined that for me. Did you hear that there's a rumor that they're launching Hulk into space at the end of this, at some point in this movie? That, I, you know, that's a big rumor that I've been hearing. And then Mark Ruffalo has even come out and said that he wants to make a Hulk movie and he wants that Hulk movie to be Planet Hulk. Yeah. Awesome. Do That'd that be shit. good. But back- see, can you do Planet Hulk without doing without including Silver Surfer? Because he he played a big uh, part in it. Hell yeah! You see what I'm saying? Beta Ray Bill, like they did in the cartoon. Very true. I think that'd be good. I it could they could do it. They could do it, and then they could do World War Hulk. All right, you're getting too ahead of yourself now. Which would be awesome, and then at the end, you'd just be fucking let down. Just like the comic. <laughs> just, like, yeah, just like the comic. Like like every Scott Snyder Batman run, New 52. You're like, yes! Oh. Dude, if I had time to go, I wanted to go to storage and dig those out because I can still get a decent amount for them. Out yeah, get rid of that stuff now because it's not even worth shit soon. So, more DC comic book news. Wonder Woman gets a director and loses a director. Um... I can't remember the woman's name that was going to direct Wonder Woman, but I've heard rumors that she wanted Wonder Woman to have a pet talking tiger. From what I heard, I didn't hear that. What I heard was... Creative differences. Creative differences. And uh, Newsarama quoted her as saying, um, this movie is going to suck or something like that. This is not an exact quote, but I'm just kind of 
going by whatever. Paraphrasing. Movie. Thank you, paraphrasing. Something along the lines of this movie's going to suck and I don't want my name attached to it. Yeah, that sounds like we heard your shitty ideas and said, bump you, and you got pissed off, and now you're like, well, F that movie. It's going to be a piece of shit. Well, I, I'm still one of the firm. I, dude, I already know where you're going, what you're going to say. You know, you're Miss uh, you're Gina, but we're not going there. I'm actually wasn't going to bring her up. Yeah, no, after I said what I'm going to say, you probably would have. I'm still on the fence about the whole Gal Gadot thing, mm -hmm. but I just recently rewatched uh, Fast and Furious 4, 5, and 6. Mm-hmm. And the facial structure and the accent grew on me. Of, she still has no body. Dot. Yeah. She still has the body. I mean, nobody's seen what she's looked like since she's bulked up, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. But the face and the accent grew on me. And I'm like, hmm. I could, the, the, just that alone, I could picture, kind of, because she's, had, she's got the strong cheekbones. As skinny as she is. She's got the strong cheekbones. The hair was cool. I like that the... Cause, Wonder Woman's been voiced in numerous cartoons, but they always gave her like a manly kind of American esque voice. But nobody's ever given her an accent. Like nobody knows what anybody from the Thermoscaria sounds like. Why would why not they give they her an accent? Like, I would think they had a Greek accent. And she you know, is, that's uh, just me. The actress she she's is Israeli. Like, yeah, exactly. So that is close enough, right? Yeah, you know, she was actually in the Israeli Armed Forces. <laughs> So, as as much as I'm like, Gal Gadot can't, I mean... We don't know. It's another know. wait and see. I mean, it is it is a wait and see. Uh, Patty Jenkins is now going to direct it. Mm -hmm. She was actually supposed to direct Thor Dark World, but left Thor Dark World for creative differences. So, how funny is that? Yeah, it's kind of ironic. Is she going to um, make it? I kind of doubt see, it. See, I can't say I'm glad she left Thor Dark World, because we don't know what she would have brought to the table. Yeah, I, As well, far as Thor Dark World itself goes, I thought that movie was great. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are like, that movie sucked. I'm like, really? Or did we watch the same movie? Yeah, no duh. That movie was great. Like, I don't I don't understand that. It's the same people that say Superman, that Man of Steel sucked. Man of Steel was good. I'm like, did, Man of Steel did we awesome. watch the same movie? Man of Steel was awesome. Like, I don't think we could have, in today's day and age, I don't think we could have asked for a better Superman movie. Any other Superman movie they would have given us, and I know people are like, especially Carrie, who probably won't ever hear this, so I can talk as much as I want to. No, I'm going to tell. I got to text him. Yeah, later. go ahead and tell him. That'll be great, because then he'll <laughs> fucking message me and be like, hey, boss. And I'll be like, fuck you, Superman, Super <laughs> Classic, Carrie. Um, Give us another view. You know, people want, like, that Christopher Reeves, like, that would not work today. The Americana, it cherry pie, baseball. Yeah, it wouldn't you know. work today. It's the world is a different place, and I feel like I was talking to my cousin about this earlier. Waiting for you to get here to record, that that's the one thing where I feel like Marvel's kind of taking a tongue in cheek almost approach to their characters, where they kind of make them they, they've added a lot of humor. Maybe tongue in cheek was the wrong idea. They've added a lot of humor to it. There they kind of laugh at themselves, whereas the DC universe cinematically, what it looks like they're building, is something that's more reflective of the world we live in today. Mm. And yeah, comics are escapism, but at the same time, like I said before, how can you praise Daredevil for being dark and gritty, but shit on the DC Cinematic Universe for being dark and gritty also? Because it can't stay that way. I mean, Green Lantern can't be dark and gritty, or it won't work. Right. Flash, can't, Flash definitely can't be dark and gritty, or it won't work. I um, think because they came out with, like you said, that was a good thing. How you were like, how Superman came out, dark and gritty. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it reflects the world today. Mm -hmm. I think people weren't expecting that. And that's the only thing they have to base it on right now. Obviously, Batman Superman is supposed to be dark and gritty. Yeah. And if you disagree with that in any way, shape, or form, you never read a Batman Superman story. And that's the other thing. People are like, oh, what the hell? Batman and Superman are fighting. Okay, dude, you asked a comic book fan, best Batman Superman, what are they going to say? They're going to say them fighting. They're going to say the Dark Knight Returns. But how many... So why wouldn't they give that to you cinematically? Here, here's the thing, though. As a comic fan, you should also know, any superhero that fights another superhero always ends in them teaming up and realizing they have a mutual villain. Yeah, totally. It's like I've told everyone that hated Man of Steel that they, that was a rookie Superman. He didn't know what he's doing. So anything that happened there was blamed on the fault that he really doesn't know what he's doing. Right. And I said before, I even knew that they were casting Affleck as Batman, that I wouldn't be surprised if they skewed Batman older. You did say that, I remember. And made him like a mentor to Superman. Mm -hmm. It's different, it's something we haven't seen, and it makes sense. What do you think that, that one clip where they uh, they showed Affleck as Bruce Wayne kind of sitting there like with the voiceover? 
What do you think? I thought he looked like a decent Bruce Wayne. I'd say the hair. You know, they gave is, him that Playboy esque kind of hair. This is the thing, man. Is people hate Affleck, and you helped me realize this. And a lot of people will denounce him and be like, he's going to suck as Batman because of Daredevil. When you really can't blame the crap from Daredevil on him. Any parts of the Daredevil movie that sucked doesn't really fall on Affleck. He's just an actor. Did he write that movie? Did he direct that movie? Absolutely not. He was just paid to do a job. Mm -hmm. So if this movie sucks, we get to blame it on Zack Snyder, I guess. Yeah. And whoever the hell the writers are, I'm not even sure who wrote it. But speaking of Batman, Suicide Squad movie coming out, Jared Leto is the Joker. Kind of don't know how to feel about this. At the same time, knowing that I'm kind of like, eh, the guy can act. Yes, he can. He can act. And then I also, when they announced Heath Ledger as the Joker, I was kind of like, The eh. guy from Not Another Teen movie? And the dude gave <laughs> us like, one of the greatest interpretations of the Joker ever. Oh, Heath yeah. Ledger. Yeah. So, it really, I feel like Jared Leto is a wait and see. Honestly, with Suicide Squad, I think my biggest, biggest issue, is Will Smith is dead shot, dude. What the, what the fuck? And I think this comes back to, like, we've had this discussion before. I don't know if I'm sure. And that's sure, nothing against personally. Will Smith, because no, Will Smith's a great actor. Smith. For what Will Smith does, I like Will Smith. Yeah. And Will Smith has been in good movies. But is he dead shot? No. And I think this falls into that thing where, like, whether people know it or not. Here's the best thing. Have you ever watched... Dead Shot's not black, check, man. Check this out. Check this out. Well, neither was Kingpin. And they, yeah, no. But that was, like, one of the best things about that Daredevil movie. It, yeah. And that, well, that's because that movie sucked, but Michael Clark Duncan is awesome. Yeah. And I think that's why people, as a fan of comics, I was able to look past Kingpin not being white because Michael Clark Duncan is awesome. Now they've refixed that. And the king's been white. The king's been white. And they're the old. And Netflix. he's still awesome. And he's still awesome. But let me ask you this, though. There's a, a mockumentary yeah. that Mark Hamill was a part of a few years ago called Comic Book the Movie. Have you watched this? I have not. You need to watch this. I've heard of it, but I have not Dude, seen it. Dude, you need to watch it. It's it's great. It's basically sums up kind of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's Hollywood. It, it's, like I guess it's a mockumentary. So he Mark Hamill plays a character called Kurt Swan, I believe. And Swan is this teacher, but he's also like this avid comic collector. And his biggest character, his favorite character ever is, I believe, Captain Liberty. Okay. And um, Hollywood decides they want to make a Captain Liberty movie. So they, in order to have, quote unquote, street cred with the, the actual fans, they decide to bring on a Captain Liberty consultant, which is Swan. Because he's, like, the comic community's most well-known fan. Right. And, you know, just kind of how, uh, what's this guy's name? Michael Merslin, I think, how, how he is for Batman. How he's, like, this big fan, but they include him in, like, all these things. Mm -hmm. The same thing, kind of. So, they fly him out to San Diego Comic-Con. And now, he starts taking things into his own hands. He hires an actor to portray him at a convention and all this other stuff. And it's just a hilarious movie. But when he, he gets a uh, leaked script... And he reads it over, and he's like, oh, my God, Hollywood is butchering my character. This is not the character that I know. And then, like, they did this thing where she, had, uh, Captain Liberty had a sidekick called Liberty Lass. And she kind of looked like uh, a star girl, almost, from uh, Justice Society. Mm -hmm. But uh, now they've turned her into, like, this black leather, almost a Baroness-looking character. And she's, like, all machine guns. And that's how they turned him. They turned him to, like... From this happy-go-lucky Captain America kind of looking guy slash Superman to this black ops, you know, hanging on a rooftop, sniping people's head off kind of characters. So you need to watch the movie and the comparison to what we're talking about will make a lot more sense. But that's what comes to mind. But, like, I, I feel like, uh, you know, while we were gone, um, oh, my God, I, can't, I was just talking to my cousin about this earlier. I can't remember her name now. The girl from the Fast and the Furious movies. Gal Gadot. No, no, no. Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez. Letty. There was the rumor going around that she was going to be Green Lantern. I heard that. And she came out and she said, why the hell would I be Green Lantern? Green Lantern's a white dude. Yeah. I'm a Mexican chick. Hollywood needs to stop switching the races of these characters and create new characters if they want racial diversity. Mm -hmm. And people got pissed off. But she's right. Like, why try and... Like, I understand that everybody wants 
But why try and pigeonhole stuff? Why try and force something that's not there? Yeah. Why make Deadshot black when he's not black? Another thing with the Suicide Squad movie, like, I don't you like? I think DC is taking a big risk on there because you get with Marvel, they they had nothing to lose, mm-hmm. so, you know. So they threw out the B characters, and it worked. You know, with DC, they've got everything to lose. Yeah, everything. So you figure you'd keep going with your your top tier things, and you're like, hey, let's introduce Suicide Squad. First of all, that title turns younger viewers off to it. Mm-hmm. You know, a parent, a very conservative parent, like that Florida mom. Right. She'd be like, I'm not taking my kid to watch anything with suicide in the title. Right. You know, so that right there, no. But then on top of that, you you know, hey, let's put some star power with Will Smith. Like like comparing him to Netflix, nothing against Will Smith. But will he do a good job the way Clark Duncan did as Kingpin? Will he do that to Deadshot to wait and see situation? I don't understand why they're pushing a Suicide Squad movie out so quick before they push out a Wonder Woman or a Green Lantern or a Flash or any of the other things that they, in my opinion, and a lot of other comic opinions, should be out before them. I really think That's like, it's... hey, Marvel releases Spider-Man. They re- Let's say they had the rights to everything. Yeah. They'll release Spider-Man. They'll release X-Men. Then they'll release Guardians. And then in your head, you're like, I mean, we all know how that turned out with Guardians. Right. But not knowing. Then you're like, well, that's like, well, you're going to release Batman, Superman. Oh, and the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Like, does that well, seem right? I think it's Warner Brothers trying to take a risk. Like, they realize that the market's there. That was the only window that Will Smith had open. And they're like, dude, yeah. we got to do and it. And they realize that they've just got to push it. Right. Like, they can't wait to... I mean, obviously, they realize they can't pull what Marvel has done. See, but that's the thing. They can. Why can't they? Well, because they... It's, it's The only difference is Marvel's ahead of them. What's the point? Why, yeah, why have to catch up? Because the going to burst one day. That's very true. Whether we want whether we want to acknowledge that or not... No, no, it's true. We the, have said The bubble is going to burst. People are going to get sick of... Because what? We talked about this um, last, uh, last season when you were still living in the other spot. Yeah. We were talking about how... Um, uh, what, in 2016, 2017, there's like nine movies mm-hmm. coming out or whatever the case? Like, that's overkill. Like, at some point, people are going to be like, okay, I'm done with these comic book movies. I've had enough. Yeah. So, it's do or die now for them. They've got to do it before no one cares anymore. Exactly. So, wouldn't you, if, if that's the case, wouldn't you do it with something more well-known? Well, yeah, I would. But I feel like at the same time, they're testing the waters for obscure characters. I think that's why you're getting a Suicide Squad movie. I think that's why you're getting a, um, a Justice League Dark movie, even though that's not what it's going to be called. I think them throwing Joker in the Suicide Squad movie is a way to get him back on screen again without making another solo Batman film. And at the, well, at the same time, it also gives people a reason to go see it. Like Harley Quinn and Joker, boom, you're going to go see that. Yeah. I am not going to go see it. Yeah. You're like, oh, Suicide Squad? What what the hell is that? Oh, wait, Joker and Harley Quinn? Oh, dude, I'm there. Yeah. Even with Black Deadshot, you're there. Yeah. Like, why couldn't he have been Black Spider? Which, by the way, why do black characters have to be named Black Lightning? Black Spider? What the... What's the deal with that shit? (laughs) Dude, I would die. Well, no, because DC said they're not doing any more, like, comedy-esque things in Uh their movies. But how funny would it be if they did something like where Deadshot's getting ready, you know, and everybody has their, their things uh, before they go into, like, a major battle, like, their rituals. Right. But if he's, like, listening to music, and it's, like, getting jiggy with it playing. Nice. That would be hilarious. But he's got, like, this Stone Cold face on, and he's, like, putting his, you know, loading up his guns and everything. And you hear, na, 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 na. Dude, yeah, how can great would that be? That. I can almost see that. That's that's a Marvel move. That is a Marvel move. But, uh, yeah. I'll go see it. I mean... I'm gonna go see Batman Superman. Yeah. I'm gonna go see Suicide Squad. The only one I am still on the fence about is Fantastic Four. I will see Fantastic Four when it comes out on DVD. See, I haven't decided. I'm gonna watch it, yes. When, I'm not gonna go I haven't to decided. To see that movie. Well, my not. cousin works at a theater, so I can, I, I can just get in. So well, okay, that's different. I, I just don't know if I want to give him that time. I don't want to give... That's Fox, right? I don't want to yeah. give Fox that money. Because I'd really love to see those characters go back to Marvel. Very true. I would really like but to see a thing. Marvel Fantastic now, Four. Now, here's my problem with the Fantastic Four and the X-Men being owned by Fox. Go back to the bubble is going to burst pretty soon. When X-Men and Fantastic when, not if, but when they revert back to Marvel, is it going to be too late? 
It could be, but it could also be the saving grace of Marvel. It could be, okay, people are tired of the Avengers now. Well, okay, we're going to do X-Men. We're going to do Fantastic Four. And do Galactus the right way, and not then, a like, cloud. You know, honestly, at some point, Marvel could tell all these great stories and be like, okay, we've done all this stuff. Now we can do cool stuff. Now we can do Old Man Logan. We can do, you know, we can just start doing, like, the crazy shit that fans would die to see. We could do the Planet Hulks. We could do uh, Future Imperfect. It's a lot of Hulk. But, yeah. you know, you get my point. Yeah. We could do AVX. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, that's at which would sell, dude. Sell. Like, the big, the big cinematic comics that are meant to be made into movies. Because, I mean, they don't have to, you know, just make stuff up. Right. Like Age of Ultron. That's named after a horrible event that no one wants to remember. But, you know, it's... Suicide Squad, you know, could it be good? Is it going to do the fail? Wait and see. Uh, back to the Batman thing. Like, uh, you were talking about people playing Batman. Josh Hartnett just talked about how he was going to be Batman, I guess. They had offered him Batman. He actually sat down and talked with... What was the guy that did the Batman movies? I can't remember. Nolan. Nolan. He had sat down and, and talked with Nolan. And at the time, Nolan was casting The Prestige. Yeah. And Hartnett really wanted to do The Prestige, but he was afraid that... If he took Batman, then prestige? he would get prestige. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you're like prestige, like two it's words. It's prestige. Yeah. I don't know like, why. Is that a different movie? It's, uh, but for some reason, he felt like he was going to be tight. podcast, fast. man. Learn how to pronounce things. <clears throat> what? It's the prestige. Did I say it fucked up? You're like the prestige. Did I? Yeah, that's why I was like looking at you. I was I'm like, just enunciating prestige? weird. <clears throat> like, Whatever, man. I got like three hours of sleep. Give me a break. <laughs> Shit. Now I got the problem you had last weekend, except I'm not hungover. I'm just fucking tired. Whatever, man. <laughs> but anyway, didn't work. he didn't want to typecast, be typecast, and now he sees like all the stuff Christian Bale's got to do for me in Batman, and he's like, oh, I should have done this. I just thought it was kind of funny. Yeah. Because it's so after the fact to even like say, I was going to be Batman. And it's like, well, it's kind of over. What do you like, Charles, that Ben Affleck's Batman now, and they didn't ask you what the fuck's up with that? Um, sticking with the movie subject. There's rumors about a possible Black Widow movie. Okay. Uh, should they make it? Hell yes. Name the last superhero movie you saw that starred a female character. Like a solo movie. Well, I'm going to have to cut out on the side. There was like... No, 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 no. There was you like put, five seconds of You put the Jeopardy the music in there. there. Yeah, right? I'm dead serious. When I listen to this, like, Jeopardy I, music honestly, better be in there. Honestly, I don't remember. Supergirl? <laughs> wow. Supergirl? Wow. Because I didn't see Catwoman, because that was... And we've talked about that before. What about Elektra? Uh, oh, yeah. I yeah, know. I didn't see that either. You see? Exactly. No. I think, yes, they should do a Black Widow movie. <clears throat> I didn't want to see that movie, <clears throat> because I didn't like Daredevil, and I'm not, a fucking, I'm not a fan of Jennifer Gardner. Now, here's my thing. Now, if they make a solo Black Widow movie, I mean, she's obviously popular enough to be a co-star in other movies. You know, and then hold her own in Avengers. But can't she carry her own movie? Yes. Can she carry her own movie? Or do they give her her own movie, but you have somebody else? Like how it was Captain America Winter Soldier, but it was pretty much Captain America team up, if you think about it. Right, right. With her and Fury and Falcon. Right. Now, do they do the same thing with her? And it's like Black Widow, but you have a supporting character in Mark Ruffalo or Tony Stark or whatever. I think the smartest thing to do would be... To give us a backstory on the widow, okay, because it's been hitting it. So let's see it. Let's see Black Widow. Well, supposedly, Avengers Two has got a bunch of backstory on her. Oh, really? Yeah, like those scenes, like the ballerina scenes. And uh-huh. all that, that's all. Dig- excuse me, digging into her past. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, see, why couldn't they just you know do that in a solo movie? Like they could have done a whole solo movie just building up to Black Widow becoming a member of Shield. True. But that's one of those things where it's like, bro, the studio's sitting there, can she do it? Like, not her as the actress, but can the character carry that? So I think so. I think it would be awesome. If they can give Ant-Man a movie and it not even be... Have you seen the trailer? The, you know, this is the thing, okay, with Ant-Man. Obviously, and moving on. I was Yeah, <laughs> moving on. We were totally going to talk about this. This was just a, it was just a natural flow into... Yeah. I feel like... Who the hell wants to see Ant-Man? Me. Then they cast it, 
And I was oh, okay, like, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not trying to see. And this, like, I'm drawing a blank on his name here, and I hate myself. Paul Rudd. He's Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd is one of my favorite comedic actors, dude. I love Paul Rudd. In love butt. Paul Rudd in the butt. At anything that dude, <laughs> I'm gonna put it in ya, dick in ya. Have you ever seen that movie? No. It's not. It's not anything preferred. It's it's uh, movie, him and Jennifer Aniston. Whatever. It was a good movie. I can't for right now. I can't remember the name of the movie for some reason. Paul Rudd's awesome. I love you, man. Uh, forty year old or not forty year old virgin? Yeah, he was a forty year old virgin. <clears throat> Knocked up. Uh, I didn't, I hated not though. This is this is four or not this is forty. Yeah, that's what it was called, right? This is forty, I think. Whatever. Paul Rudd's awesome. Ant Man. Eh. And then I saw the trailer and I was like, Man, Classic Marvel. Wow. Classic like the Marvel. shit they're doing in that, like the fight scenes, yeah, are amazing. Yeah, because he's just dudes getting themselves punched. But then they throw in like the Rudd humor, and I'm like, eh. Uh, I don't know, man. It's small. It's very minimal. Ha! Ah, see what I did there? It's small, yeah. very minimal. It's kind of like, I, I just feel like, like I don't know, Rick. If you've ever seen Rick and Morty, Dude. I'm kind of like pessimistic about it. Uh, hands down. Best use of a choo-choo train set. No. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Totally. That was great. They're fighting on the they, uh, the toy train, Thomas the toy train thing. And all of a sudden, the way the camera cuts, and you just see the toy train fall over. No, it was, it was very. <laughs> that was great. That's classic Marvel right there, man. <clears throat> it could th- that could be their next Guardians, but it won't be as good as Guardians. Yeah. It won't be. I'm still trying to figure out why they chose to go with Scott Lang over Hank Pym. Is it because Hank Pym? The story maybe is a wife dark. beater. Yeah. Who knows? And they don't want to get into that? I mean, I don't know. Is that movie going to... I think potentially, if currently... Also, maybe because the, the story, you know, obviously, the, the voiceover from uh, Michael Douglas was saying, you know, hey, you always wanted to be a hero. You wanted to do it for your daughter. And that kind of, that's something that parents, like, oh, you know, well, it, it's, a, it's a movie. like a, relate A to. redemption-esque yeah, yeah. kind of movie where it's like, okay, you introduce Hank Pym. He has no redeeming qualities about him. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's also a way to get both characters on screen. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to just doing Yellow Jacket. As much as I didn't care about Yellow Jacket, that costume looks really badass. But you know what I like about it? It looks Iron Man esque. Yeah. So it also has that theme, that underlying Marvel theme going through it. Maybe he stole some, you know, a bit of uh, Stark technology or something. Yeah, we'll see. If, If. Currently, on the movies going to be released and on the slate, this is the one that feels like it could fail. Oh, yeah, but that's what everybody said about Guardians. You know? Yeah, but I think Guardians just surprised everybody. Well, that's what I'm saying. That, like, that's... You didn't know what to expect. And that's I, the same I, thing with Ant-Man. We don't know what to this. expect. Yeah, but Guardians was like, I don't know, man. See, but it's hard to there compare was, the two right now. I feel now like there was more potential. Because Ant-Man is not out where Guardians is. Now, if we have the same conversation later this summer after Ant-Man has come out and we've seen okay, it. Okay, that's like, the all right, like, be all we've got so far on Ant-Man is just a trailer. All we have on Doctor Strange is Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm good with that. I'm going to tell you right now, I think Doctor Strange is going to kick way more ass than Ant-Man. Oh, of course. Like, I don't know why that movie didn't happen first. I, I don't know. That movie is just, what the hell? Yeah. That movie needed to happen. And speaking of more movie goodness for all of us nerds, Star Wars. Oh, good Boom. God. The Star Wars hype has begun. Let me tell you, I, I posted this, so I'm sure you saw it, but let me tell you about my personal Facebook page, what what it consisted of this week, okay? Um... Or in the last week and a half, I should say, Daredevil posts for Netflix. Mm-hmm. All over the people, all over that show, binge watching, loving it. The Chicago Cubs. You got your Cubs fans cheering that they've won. They won. They won. The Hawks are in the playoffs, so you have people going crazy. That the Black Hawks are kicking ass now again. You know, cause that's not a surprise. That's because yeah, that's just every year now. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Batman versus Superman trailer and the Star Wars trailer. Those are the five biggest things that have been clogging my news feed for the last week and a half. Okay? 
The Cubs posts, those disappeared. They lost, they disappeared. Hawks posts, they disappear right after the game's over. People are still talking about Daredevil. People are still talking about Batman, Superman. And people are still talking about Star Wars. You know what that means? Nerds over jocks, buddy. Totally. But here's my thing as well. I was at work the other day and I was delivering some tires. Big one. Um, and uh, as I walked in so the lady could sign her invoice, on the radio, I overheard the DJ talking about, he goes, the in his exact words, the internet has been going crazy for the last 48 hours with the release of the new Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer. And this is why. And then you hear a soundbite of Han Solo saying, Chewie, we're home. And that's all I heard because I had to leave. But just hearing that on a country music station, I was like, you know what? Yes. that That's it. Yes. So anything you've got to say about this Star Wars trailer, man, let's do it. I'm, let, I'm Yes. Fucking Christmas can't get here soon enough. Like, for real, man. Like, when they released that tease... I wasn't impressed with the tease. That everyone freaked out. Oh, my God, there's a black stormtrooper, which was ridiculous. Everybody, well, I didn't see that. I was I saw everybody freaking out over the, the three-pronged lightsaber. Yeah. I didn't give a shit. Yeah, neither did I. That teaser did nothing for me. Yeah, no. Now, not the either. trailer that was released... Hell, yes. With that warship, I forgot what it's called. I know people are going to kill me. The a Star Destroyer? Star, thank the you, the Crash Star Destroyer. Star Destroyer? Yes, in the desert. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, totally. The beat up Vader uh, helmet. <clears throat> the melted Vader helmet with the skull in it? Yes. Yes. That was awesome. But here's my thing. Who Who's narrating that? Is that supposed to be Luke? Yep. Okay. Did you hear what he said about Vader? Yeah. What did he say? He said, my father had it. No. What did he say? My father has it. He didn't use past tense. He said, the force, my father has it. I have it. He didn't say my father had it. Well, maybe it was just a mistake. I don't know. <clears throat> because, I mean, how would they bring back Vader? And Dude, that be kind of a what mistake? if Luke well, they did that. goes to the dark side? They did that in the books. Yeah, it's just the books. I'm talking about the movies. Yeah, Not everybody read the books. Like, yeah, but all the Star Wars nerds did. True. You know, there's enough, like, to know that that... But what if they did that in the movie? I don't know. All I know is I'm excited. Everybody is. And I can't wait for Christmas. Dude, go... It's a, a Christmas Day, right? And if you can't... I don't I don't know. Is it Christmas Day? I don't know. That's insane. If uh, you can't wait, head out to your local comic book store. Marvel's putting out some choice Star Wars comics right now. Um, I would highly recommend Darth Vader. And if you're a fan of the Star Wars Rebels cartoon on Disney... The Kanan book. Um, those are the best. Out of the four that are currently out, those are the best. The, there wait, is the what book? Kanan. The hell is that? He's the main character from that Star Wars Rebels show on Disney. Okay. He was like, uh, that show takes place sometime during the original trilogy. Okay. I'm not sure when. But he was actually a Padawan. Looking at your Blu-rays, I've noticed you've got the original. No, you've just got part four. No, that's the original. That's the that's the collected edition. Oh, that's all, all yeah, three Yeah, that's all three of them. But I noticed you don't have the prequels. Yeah, no. <laughs> not owning those. <clears throat> they're crap. But How's the quality on those? It's, they're great. Now, those aren't the originals, right? The no, unfortunately before. they're not. Those aren't out yet. Oh, okay. They're supposed... Disney announced what they that they're released? putting them out. What's the digital collection? The digital collection. Is that just like downloadable? Yeah, yeah it's you, just the digital collection. you actually collection. go buy it? No, it's just the digital collection. Ah, okay, whatever. Yeah, I don't really understand what the hell the deal with that is either. <clears throat> but uh, they've got the four comics out. They've got Star Wars, Darth Vader, Lando, or not Lando, Princess Leia, and Kanan. The Star Wars comic itself, eh. The Leia comic, uh, it's a bust for me. Like, it's just a bust. Darth, awesome. Kanan, I'm a big fan of the Star Wars Rebel shows. Kanan's good. Their Lando book is coming out soon. Oh, which, yeah, uh, he's like the pimp of, of the Star Wars universe. You gotta read that. It's gotta be good. But then, I'd like to see the Collector and Lando Carissian uh, crossover. Nice. But the Collector has to be Benny, uh, Del Toro. Yeah, Benicio. Yeah. And then they've got uh, Star Wars Journey to the Force Awakens. Which is going to be official Star Wars canon. They've these, uh, Disney and Marvel. Have, Disney's come out and said that, as far as canon is concerned, now it's just the movies, Star Wars Rebels, and this current batch of Marvel comics. What about Clone Wars? No, Clone Wars isn't falling canon. 
Really? Yeah. Which is why Disney didn't finish it when they bought Lucas. Which sucks because I actually started watching that show. It's pretty good. Uh, the funny thing is, is spoiler for people that don't watch Rebels. Um, uh, Anakin's Padawan from Clone Wars actually shows up in Rebels. Mm. And she is not a Jedi. She's just a rebel. Mm. Which it was, I was like, really, Ahsoka, that's her name. I was kind of it's surprised something you to see recognize, her. or do they flat out say that she... No, was... she, she flat out says it. Okay. That she's not... Well, apparently, in the end of the Clone Wars at some point, like, she gets branded a traitor mm. and a Sith, and she's not. And they chase her off, and I think that... That's why she becomes a rebel. Begins her, like, F the Jedi Order. But now in Rebels, there's been a decent amount of time that you could tell this it has to take place during... I mean, because they introduced Vader at the end of Rebels 2. Who I've heard that Ahsoka and Vader are going to be very sparingly used during the second season. But they will have a presence. So it has to take place sometimes during the original trilogy. There's just so much Star Wars stuff out there. It's but yeah, not... Journey to the Force Awakens, official canon. It will bridge the gap between Jedi and Force Awakens. Hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, last little piece I want to talk about before we are done this week. Official canon until, well, Disney will never get rid of Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, no, so it's, it's, that's it. It's official canon. Yeah. Because, yeah, all the Expanded Universe books, all the Dark Horse stuff, Nothing. no longer canon. Yeah, I can't see Disney ever, even, you know, after we're dead and gone from this earth. Yeah, no, they'll, yeah, Disney will. Disney will hold on to Disney Star Wars. Disney will probably own DC by the time we're dead. <laughs> um, Superman gets bit by a radioactive spider. Oh, Bruce Timm's doing some original Justice League stuff in last thing, Gods and Monsters. Okay. Um, it's completely original, like I said. Not based on anything. Just animated feature? <clears throat> animated feature. Okay. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Kind of villains. Really? Kind of like anti-heroes. A-holes. Yeah. Well, more so than Batman usually is. Yeah, way more so than usual. Hmm. Superman sporting a goatee, does not have the S crest, does not have the traditional uniform. So they is it more of like a crime different. syndicate kind of thing? I kind of, but not really. Okay. There's not a whole lot really been released on it outside of a little trailer. Mm-hmm. But Bruce Timm, man, Luke awesome. His couch. Excited. Excited. Oh, and then the last thing I want to see is what the F is with Archie Comics. Uh, Archie's ending, I'm sure you know, with SU-666, huh. which is kind of a weird place to end before they relaunch with Mark Wade and Fiona Staples. Totally looking forward to that, by the way. If you want to staples on some Archie, I'll buy that just because. But our why is the bomb. I'm why? Because they're going to they're, they're updating longest... continuity. Okay, they're but updating just, continuity. They did that after the original Crisis with the Bat and Superman books. Yeah, remember? I know, I know. Like, and, it's just a number. And why did they do it with Uncanny? But next month we get Uncanny oh. six hundred. It's uncanny. Whatever, uncanny. My, I don't know uncanny. why I have to say uncanny. Put your pinky up when you drink something. Uncanny. So anyway. I, I don't understand, like, uh, Archie has found success with the Undead uh, the after, Afterlife, Afterlife with Archie. which was awesome. I yes. read it. Apparently, there's a Sabrina book that's doing good, too. Yeah. And then they're doing good stuff. Uh, like, you, now, we talked about this before we started, whenever I do what we were going to talk about. Archie versus Predator, you said this is already out. What the hell? I actually well, think I don't it's know if it's out. Over. I, just, I, saw I actually it. think the last issue comes out this month. But what? Whatever. Archie versus Predator? And then you said that this isn't true, and maybe it's just not a rumor, but I didn't really sink too much into it, but Sharknado and Archie? No, I didn't say if that, was, that wasn't true. I asked you if that was what, real. What the fuck kind of drugs are those people taking over at Archie Comics? And can I have some? <laughs> <coughs> so, that uh, pretty, much, pretty much wraps up all I've got for this week's edition of Breaking the Fourth Wall. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what? Archie and Sharknado? Seriously, what the fuck are they smoking? Oh, shit. Like, that's got to be some really good shit for you to be like, man, Sharknado, Archie, this is a great idea. We're going to... What? Yeah. What? You know what? Looking at your son's uh, turtle set up there. Yeah. Reminded me I wanted to put this out there. Uh, as well as I put... I don't know if you saw my post last night. I caught up on my Ninja Turtle reading. Right. I know, big shock, right? Oh my yeah. Sh- I should have been on date. But, yeah, you um, should have Slacker. 
no time. Man. If anything, man, that's I'm the busy. One, I'm busy running man, this show. When I used to, when I used, to, yeah, <laughs> it's so hard you work at running this show. Let me I tell do. you, I do. Dude, I sure when I used to deliver, <laughs> when I used to do have a delivery job, I would stop in the comic book store and pick up my books on Wednesday, and I could not stop myself but read comic books while I was driving. Nice. Which is probably the dumbest thing I'll ever admit to doing on this show. Which is probably why and you're it was dumb. <laughs> yeah, right. But I would literally like. Read a sentence, look up. Read a sentence, look up. Read a sentence, look up. So it was real quick. And I would read, whole, like, some days, I would read my whole stack of comics before I got off work. <laughs> yeah, that's just a weird addiction. That's so. sad, man. Yeah, but anyways, no, man. Um, so I caught up, and I, I read, actually went back. You ever? It's been a while since you read the story, so you went back and read, like, you know, the yeah. previous two or three issues. Mm-hmm. So that's why I read issues 40 through 44, which is the current one. 45, I believe, will probably be out this coming week. Um, you know, it's the whole attack on Tekken Drone uh-huh. and, you know, death, quote-unquote, of right. Donatello. Yeah. Um, beautiful story. Beautiful story. Donatello is not dead, people. Like, I can't say that enough. Like, not once in the issue did they say he was dead. No, not at all. You know, they showed... I mean, it was a brutal scene. Yeah, and then this like, the, the you know, same like, week the issue dropped, they give you a, a preview of the free comic book day issue. Yeah. And it shows the Splitter talk to him, he's in a freaking coma. Yeah. But people are still, like, I'm just laughing. I, it's at just, everybody it's just idiots, running out man. that day. Oh, I can't find it. It's sold out. I need to have it. Wait a minute. If you're such a Turtles fan, why do you all of a sudden need to have this? You'd if you're a Turtles fan, you'd already have it. It'd have been in your pull box. Or you'd have made a note to go get it. Now, I'm not saying you can't be a, f- a Turtles fan and you'd be like, oh, I don't have the issue. That's fine. Don't consider yourself a hardcore. Yeah, That's no. It. It's, I, you I know? agree. But then you're getting into That's like somebody asking me if I'm a gamer. Fan. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm a gamer. <clears throat> oh, you know, what games you got for PS4? I don't even own a PS4. Well, what games you got for Xbox One? I don't own my Xbox One. What's the last game, brand new game you played? I don't know. When did Marvel vs. Capcom 3 come out? Yeah, see, I don't you know? f that shit because I'm I'm a hardcore gamer and I don't own an Xbox One or a PS4 yet. Nice. Okay. I just it's just one of those things. Like it, it, it me it's, being the hardcore turtle guy that I am. It pisses me off when people do that shit. And you're like, hey, it's the equivalent to like when Amazing Spider-Man 700 came out and people were like, and they announced on the news it was going to be the death of Peter Parker. So you have all these people who just poke their heads in. Hey, do you guys got that comic? Get out of here. Yeah. You're, you're not, no. You're not it's gonna those come people in here. that, like, give you the, an issue of Boom. Yeah. And then they do a buttload of reprints. Yeah, like, you're not going to come in here. And then it's never really worth anything. And, uh, and tell me, you know, hey, you know, I've always liked Spider-Man. Oh, we're, we're, I've never seen you a day in my life. All of a sudden you want to come in here and ask me about the book and you know nothing about it? Yeah. Get out of here. So that's what I'm trying to get a point to is the Turtles. He's not dead. So all you idiots who paid all this ridiculous amount of money to get issue 44... Ha ha to you. If you really wanted it, you would have had it in a pool box. Yeah, way to keep feeding the asshole scalper machine. No doubt, man. I think there's people that are going to listen to this and are going to say we're wrong. Well, I haven't read them in a long time. I, I, I didn't have time. There's no comic book store near me. This or this or that. Hey. Graphic novels, dude. If there's a will, there's a way. Graphic you can't novels. tell me. If there's not a comic book store near you. You can't tell me you don't have a friend who has a comic book store. And you don't have a computer. You don't have a computer to you make an order just online. A digital copy. You know? Well, no, you they have to just own it. Pirate it. They've got to own it. I don't know, man. I just think it's funny, and just to rub the fact in even more, I have all the covers. Nice. And the reprint, just to rub it in, because I want to be that asshole. <laughs> well, welcome to you are that asshole. I don't even own a copy. I, of I think the season has just officially started again. Yeah, nice. Well, that's uh, that pretty much wraps up breaking the fourth wall for this week. You still got any more beer? Junior is an asshole. No, I don't have any beer. You know what I mean? You drink all that? The mics? Yeah, it's gone. Damn, that's gone. Thirsty. That's gone. Thought you had out of brought some. No, hey, hey man. Next week. Oh, actually. I'm glad you said that. Week, yes, next week there will be no. I, I did it. Oh, go, uh, ahead. go ahead, man. We'll be on hiatus next week due to C2E2. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Where, so now uh, we'll go ahead and say it without being, without being a dickhead? Yeah. Okay. Next week, um, next weekend, yeah, or no, yeah, next week, there will be no Spinner Rack 
breaking the fourth wall or the lock up. I had to think about that for a second. What the fuck is that called? Yeah. Um, or the lock up due to me being at C2E2. So um, what we will be posting is the interviews and C2E2 footage that throughout that week. Um, but we'll be back in two weeks from today with uh, our C2E2 review, or I guess my review, and letting you know how everything mm-hmm. was. And then, uh, and then we'll be forward. catching up on news during that week. And yeah. And then the following week, three weeks out from then, we'll be sitting here and we'll be going over our Avengers movie review. Totally. You're going. I, I, I'm going to try. No, no, I'm going to try. There is no try. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst Yoda ever, man. <laughs> Stick to your day job. There is no try. <laughs> <laughs> this is Big B, Brian Adams, <laughs> and Junior Ruiz. A.K.A. the bad Yoda. <laughs> yeah, A.K.A. The, the horrible Yoda. The self-proclaimed asshole. It's, it, is it really self-proclaimed if you sat there and said, yeah, you're an asshole? Then well, I'm yeah, but you said it first. Well, it's because everybody you're knows You're like, yeah, I'm an asshole. It's like self-proclaiming that. Everybody knows, but I'm that lovable asshole. You're the lovable asshole. If I wasn't, you wouldn't have fucking let me in being like, two hours late. Like Bill Cosby's the lovable rapist. <laughs> See you all in two weeks.